hello you guys it's v don elizabeth and welcome back to my channel today i will be discussing some tips that was highly requested which is tips on getting back on track if you fell off if you want to get back started and i'm just here to give y'all the real i ain't gonna sugarcoat it y'all know i'm gonna keep it real and keep it honest so if you want some real deal spill tips keep watching right now okay Tip number one is to start now. I have heard so many people say, oh, I'm going to start January 1st with their New Year's resolutions. Oh, I'm going to start next week. I'm going to start November 1st. I'm going to start January 1st, February 1st, March 1st. The first come and then the first go. The new year come and the new year goes. But the key is if you want to start and want and you're serious about starting, it's just to start right then and there. It could be as simple as instead of going to get you some um uh, canes a whole bunch a lot of fried food you could easily say okay i'm gonna eat something more nutrient based i'm gonna drink this water instead of this soda and in the morning i'm gonna get up and go i'm gonna go work out and i'm not gonna play i'm gonna just get right to it and i feel like a lot of people procrastinate when it comes to starting the longer you take to start the longer it will take for you to actually get into the habit of being in that healthy routine being in the habit of getting you know getting used to making better health better food choices better you know just get into that routine in general so with that being said stop wasting time and start now okay tip number two stop beating yourself up so i have seen this so many times and even within myself sometimes i'll fall off you know eat real bad and now i'm you know falling out of my habit and falling out of my routine and then i start feeling guilty and sometimes I feel so guilty to the point where I was like, well, I already messed up. Let me just keep messing up. Or oh, I already feel guilty. I'll start, I start a little bit. I'll start something. But that guilt and that fear of just seeing yourself succeed and that guilt of knowing that you made the wrong, you know, you made the wrong decision, it's just only going to hold you back. A lot of people spend a lot of time being guilty when they can spend that, that time making better choices, figuring out how they're going to make choices and planning for the future to get right back on track. So whenever you fall off, the key is to not beat yourself up. Sit back, analyze what you did wrong, and keep it moving. Get right back on track and just go back to doing your daily habits, your daily routine. Stop letting that guilt beat you up. That guilt is only going to hold you back. We're human. Of course, we're going to feel guilty sometimes. But at the end of the day, the mind is a powerful thing. And use your mind to make you make better choices, okay? I know I said make a lot, but that is the number one tip to just stop beating yourself up because that is just going to only make you feel worse and worse about yourself, okay? All right. Which in that, with, with that being said, that leads me into tip number three, to learn from your mistakes. So whenever you fall off, say this is a holiday or say this is a week, weekend, you you start the weekend maybe at uh, 180. And then you, by the time Monday comes, you're probably at 185. And I'm pretty sure that you all are, are familiar with weight fluctuations. Weight fluctuations is, are real. They're serious. And they they do happen. If it's a day where you you eat more than what you used to eat, and you eat more salt, you eat more salt, and you could have drunk more water than you drank the day before, it will cause a significant change in the weight. And unless you ate over 3,500 calories, what you see on the scale, that uh, extra two, three, five pounds could only be just weight fluctuations. But in your head, if you know you ate over 3,500 calories, then yeah, you got some work to do. But the key is when you do get right back on track, that weight will fall off like this. And I'm a living witness because after Thanksgiving, I was at about 164. And I was on my period, so of course that had a lot to do with it too. Y'all know women, we got hormones, we have a lot. So I was at like 164. And so by the time I got back here to Austin, which was about maybe like a couple days, 45 days, with me just getting back on track, going back to the gym, getting to my regular routine, I was down to about 157. And if, if I let guilt beat me up, I would have probably still been at 164. But I realized, okay, I'm human, I'm a woman, let me just get back, right back on track and go back to my daily routine and then boom i'm right back where i was okay so that's just the key learning from your mistakes will help you realize like okay if i do good all week and then the weekend come i mess up 
okay, I know that them three days out the weekend could could possibly take away all the progress I made the whole week. So, okay, instead of having a cheap, cheap weekend, let me just have a cheap meal. And I don't even like cheap meals, but sometimes when you get in the habit of just starting off, just getting right back on track, you have to be lenient with yourself. You have to be patient with yourself. You can't just jump in full throttle because that will cause you, also cause you to just backtrack. And that's not what we want. So, if it's a time where you feel like you fell off, if it's a time where you feel like you just not your, your regular self, you're not in your normal routine, learn from that mistake. Sit back and analyze what did I do wrong. Let me look at this situation and make sure I don't make this mistake again. You know, like, of course I'm preaching to you, but you have to go out and make those mistakes on your own so that you can see how you would deal with them when they happen. And the best thing is just to learn from them, keep moving. Grow through what you go through, all right? Write that down. All right, number four. Do not punish yourself. And this can mean a lot of things. And when I say don't punish yourself, I mean don't go to the gym and do hella amounts of cardio. Don't go to the gym and run so hard that you pass out. Don't do that. Don't go strict on yourself and do old man where you only gonna drink uh only gonna eat one time a day. Don't sit there and say, I'm not gonna eat at all, I'm gonna starve, I'm gonna go juice, I'm gonna just, you know, detox my body and just not eat at all. Do not do that because that strict, that like punishing yourself and going to like strict habits of like saying, okay, I did this wrong. Let me go strict. Let me go, you know, rogue. No, do not do that because that will only create a cycle. I mess up, restrict. I'm going to mess up again, restrict again. And it just keeps going and going and going until something in you, inside of you tell yourself, I can't live like this no more. I can't keep doing this and I can't. I just can't do it. And my biggest thing is whenever I go, you know, whenever I do mess up, all I do is go straight back to my calorie intake. Of course, like I'm fancy and I ate a little extra, had a whole bunch of chocolate cake, y'all. The chocolate cake was amazing. But at, at some point in time, the chocolate cake had to go for me because it was it just wasn't the best choice for me. And of course I enjoyed my time then, but then when it's time to get back on track, the chocolate cake can stay where it's at. I ain't fooling with it. So the only thing that helped me was I went right back to going into my daily calorie intake, tracking my calories very accurately, going to the gym, doing my mixture of strength training and cardio, my normal routine. I didn't go in there and just go do hella cardio just because I feel like I need to burn off a lot. No, the, the key is to just not over overwhelm yourself because overwhelming yourself will only lead to you just, you know, feeling overwhelmed. And then when you feel overwhelmed, you cannot be productive. And I know for myself, I can't be productive if I'm overwhelmed, okay? All right. So now that we have got through the first four tips of what to not do to yourself and, you know, what what's the what should be the habit of getting back into it, let's start with what some more tips on how you will do when you start back, okay? So now we're at number five, which is to create a schedule. So, okay, so that means you say, all right, I'm ready to start back. I'm ready to get back on track. My first, my next tip would to be is to create a schedule. And what I mean by creating a schedule, this means... Say, for instance, you are going to go work out. So, I will, if I, for me, I like to write down the days that I'm going to go work out. Okay, I'm going to work out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. On Monday, I'm going to do upper body cardio. On Tuesday, leg day. Wednesday, I said Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So, Wednesday, leg day, and then Friday, full body. Boom. I have it planned out. And then I'm going to also take some more time to write out what I'm going to do on those days. Okay, I'm going to do bench press, shoulder press bent over rows on wednesday i'm gonna do squats deadlifts split squats leg day booty workout boom and then on friday i'm gonna do five exercises 40 seconds on 20 seconds off write it down and so then in my head it's already there right in my face so all it takes for me is to build up the courage to just go and once I get there, I know exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly what I'm going to do. And I know how I'm going to do it. And this this schedule can also uh, be including, okay, I'm going to um, eat this this day. I'm going to make sure I drink this amount of water. I'm going to make sure I do that. Just create a schedule and say, okay, I get up to go to work at this time. I have an assignment due at this time. I'm going to go work out at this time. Maybe I'm going to work on my business at this time. Just having that schedule. And I realize that just creating that schedule will help you get into the routine of just making sure you're incorporating that healthy lifestyle, incorporating that fitness. And once you do it for 30 days, you have developed a habit. And it's up to you to keep doing it, okay? All right. Number six, set small goals. 
I am big on setting small goals and I always tell my clients these small goals can be anything from saying I'm going to drink four bottles of water a day or I'm going to go work out three times a week. I'm going to make sure when I work out, I burn the X amount of calories. I'm going to make sure I incorporate a vegetable and a fruit each day. I'm going to try to cook. I'm going to try to not eat out. I'm going to only eat out one time a week. Three sodas a week, like little small goals that will help you become a better person each and every day. So some of my goals include is just making sure I incorporate abs three times a week, making sure I log my food, you know, making sure I'm creating content maybe three times a week, three workout videos or some topic videos. I just create these small goals. And yes, I'm human. Sometimes I don't meet my goals, but that just gives me that push to know next week, I'm going to make sure I do better. Or next time, or, or just because I didn't reach my goal at this amount of time, I know I can still get it done. Just having a clear vision of what you see, what you want to see in yourself, what you want to see yourself achieve and accomplish will really be helpful with setting small goals. Because those small goals will lead to big goals, and the big goals will lead to big accomplishments, okay? Create those goals, write them down, put them on your wall, put some sticky notes up daily affirmations keep that vision clear in your head okay and the most important thing is to stick to it when you set those goals don't stop until you achieve them and keep pushing keep going beyond those goals make big goals make long-term goals short-term goals just get to it okay all right number seven plan your meals okay so with me, I always like to plan my eating the day before because I noticed that like if I wait till the last minute to decide what I'm gonna eat, it could easily uh lead lead me to going to pick up some McDonald's or going to get something quick from fast food or whatever like that. But I take about ten to fifteen minutes out of my day the day before, right before I go to sleep, just to write down what I'm gonna eat. And even though I don't have a specific idea of what I'm gonna eat, I kind of just put in something that I would like. And then I write it down, and then that way it kind of gives me a time frame, okay? I'm going to eat breakfast, boom. I know what I'm, I already know what I'm eating for breakfast. I'm going to eat lunch, boom. I already know what I'm going to eat for lunch. I got dinner planned, I got my dessert, and I have it all planned out. And that just will help you create that habit of knowing exactly what you're going to eat right then and there. So it don't lead you to last-minute planning, okay? Plan ahead your eating. Create your eating schedule. If you're a person that loves a meal prep, this will be helpful for getting back on track because you already creating that system of having your meals prep. You don't got you don't got time to go grab that candy bar, but you got a whole baked chicken with some vegetables and your carbs with it already prepared. Go for that option because it's right there waiting on you. You already got it logged and it's easier access, healthy, nutrition based. Okay, all right. Number eight. Overall, just become more active. So if that means walking up and down the street, walk up and down the street. If you Sometimes when I feel like I used to get so hungry to the point where I like to think about school, I'll just go for a walk. Just exert your energy somewhere else. Exert your energy in your workout. Exert your energy in just walking around more. Like if it's a place that's close to your house and you don't feel like you're in danger, walk to it. Just get into the habit of moving around more. Even if that means getting up to walk around, stretch for a little bit, just Overall, becoming more active. If you and your friend want to hang out, instead of hanging out in the house, go to the park. I know it's cold. Put on a jacket. You y'all can go to the gym, get on treadmills, sit and talk from six feet apart. But just get into the habit of getting more active, and that just little stuff right there will allow you to see yourself grow in so many ways. All right, number nine, very very important. Ease back into your routine. And I kind of referenced this before. The reason why I say ease it back into your routine is very, very, very important is because I don't want you to jump back on track and go cold turkey. I don't want you to jump back on track. And if you never worked out five days out the week, I don't want you going to the gym five days a week. Because what this can lead to is overworking yourself. You become overwhelmed and you get tired. You get burnt out. And easing back to your routine, routine means Find different stuff that you would like to eat that fit in your calorie deficient. Or if you overall are not even in a calorie deficient and you just want to make healthier choices, make those healthier choices. Still incorporate the sweets that you love. That's why I preach the calorie deficient because as long as it's fit, you can have it. Because me, I'm going to have my dessert every day. And whether that's an ice cream bar or some yogurt or a piece of cake, if it fit, I'm going to do it. And I know that's what helped me just incorporate that sweet every now and then, get what I want. And so it's just that patience. You got to have patience with yourself to know that I never worked out five days a week. So when I say I'm going to get back on track, I'm not going to say, okay, I'm going to work out every day. Monday, you're going to go work out. You're going to be sore. Then you're going to be so sore to the point where you don't want to work out no more. So you're going to say, okay, I'm going to wait till I'm not sore no more. And then I'm going to go work out. 
that soreness can last for three to four days. But the key to getting over the soreness quick is to keep working. And that's what people do not realize. You you can get over soreness quicker by constantly working out while you sore. Making sure you stretch before and after your exercise. Ease back into that routine. You, you have nothing but time on your side. So just get to it. Don't rush it. Rushing that process will only help you will only make you more frustrated to like that goal and that vision of yourself seems so far away. But if you ease back into the routine, fall in love with the journey, you will see yourself make so many changes over time. All right. So we have reached tip number 10, which is the most important of them all. And it's focus on being consistent. Consistency will set you apart from so many people in this world. A lot of people have brilliant ideas. A lot of people have brilliant work. A lot of people have brilliant ideas, money, businesses. But the only thing that can keep them from reaching their full potential is just staying consistent. And in weight loss, it's all about consistency. It's all about being mentally ready for the journey. And being consistent means sticking to it. If you if you if you work out for a month. You don't lose no weight. Don't get frustrated and just quit. Because when you quit, you fail. When you keep going past the points where you feel like you didn't do your best, then that's when you see your true strength. You see your true inner strength. You see yourself grow and expand. You learn more about yourself. You learn from your mistakes. You're not beating yourself up. You're just working through it, okay? And you just have to stay consistent. In order to see real results that you want to see within your body and your health, fitness, you have to stay consistent. Week one, you might not be able to run a full minute. But if you keep working at it, by week three, you'll be able to run a minute and 30. It's just about keeping at it, keeping going, staying dedicated, staying focused, and just staying consistent on the task ahead. So, I was preaching. And I hope y'all was sitting there listening because I'm preaching real deal, y'all. I have been through this. I'm still kind of going through it. But I love to encourage you all. I love to tell you that you have to believe in yourself because... I believe in you and I need you to believe in yourself. The only thing that's stopping you is you, okay? So I need you to get to it. I need you to write these down, put it on your wall, put it in your face. Whatever you got to do to succeed, let's just do it. So with that being said, thanks for tuning in to my 10 tips on getting back on track. And if these tips were very helpful, drop in a comment below and tell me how you started back your journey and which tip was the most helpful. Thanks for tuning in to my channel and I hope to see you guys back soon. Don't forget to subscribe.